everyone, I'm Glenda with Surefit Designs, sometimes referred to as Glenda the Good Stitch. In this sewing series, I want to show you how easy it is to set in a knit sleeve. Well, knit stretch, and that means that the body of the garment is going to stretch to fit the enlarged sleeve cap, because you always need to have a little bit of ease in that cap in order for it to fit nicely over top of your shoulder. One thing about the knit sleeve is that you rarely need to put in any ease stitching and that's because we're actually going to ease the sleeve cap into the bodice by stretching the bodice armhole to fit the sleeve cap. You will want to prepare your sleeve to this extent. Do whatever you want to do at the hemline. You can put the hem in at this point if you want to. I've got my pinned and ready to go. And your bodice needs to be prepared. This is the back of my bodice and here is a, the center back seam. And so what I'm going to do is, here's my shoulder line, there's the side seam, and there's the underarm or the side seam of the sleeve. And we know that this is the orientation. Here's the double back notch on the sleeve cap, and there's the double notch on the back of the bodice, and there's the single notch at the top of the cap, which means that that's going to join to the shoulder seam. And of course the easiest way to orient this all together is to just put your right sides face out so that you can see it and then you can you know that when you put right sides together that this whole thing is going to be hanging properly. So what I do is I'll just grab this in my hands like this and I'll take that sleeve cap notch and I'll put it with the shoulder seam and then I just flop over like this. So now I'm working on the inside of the garment. And I'll do one pin first of all. Let me get that shoulder seam going the correct direction. I'll do a pin at the shoulder seam and get that ready. And then I go and I pin the underarm and those two seams need to match. So it's the underarm of the sleeve and the underarm of the bodice. And then you never have any easing from the underarm to the first notch, the front notch. And so I'll put a pin there and then we'll go from the underarm to the double notch at the back and put a pin right here. Now we have this much fabric of the sleeve cap to ease into that. But because the bodice is going to stretch, all we need to do is pull it taut. And what I'm going to do is pull it like this and kind of just grab the center of it so I know that that's approximately even going up from the sleeve cap notch. And I'll just stretch it a little bit more. I use a lot of pins. You've seen my other videos and, and you know that I, I have a hard time giving up my pins, so I, even with the knit fabric, I do put in enough pins to feel secure. And then I will pin around the other side. So I'm going to give a stretch, kind of find the halfway point, and put another pin in right here. And then, actually that wasn't a very good halfway point. I want to move that down just a little bit. That looks a little better. And now when I stretch that, that's a little bit more evenly distributed. And there's the sleeve cap, like this. Now, even when I'm stitching a sleeve in into a knit fabric, I still always baste it first of all to make sure that everything is in place, nothing's got buckled, nothing's got twisted. So I put my machine on the longest stitch length possible. It might be five or six millimeters with your machine. You just need to um, check your machine how long it will go for basting. Then I'm going to start at the underarm and line it up with the 5 8 inch marking on uh, the throat plate. And just make sure that everything's nice and smooth underneath. Now I always sew with my sleeve on top. I know there's all kinds of alternative ways to do this and I've seen it with the sleeve on the bottom. I prefer having the sleeve on the top and that way I can see that the uh, fullness isn't buckling on me. 
And so here we go. And I'm not going to backstitch again because this is basting. I do like to sew with the needle in the down position so that as I stop and maneuver this sleeve, I can have the needle stay in the down position like that. And I'll just take a pin out and then that means nothing is going to shift underneath the presser foot. Keep this basting as even to 5 8 inch as possible. And make sure your seam allowance cut edges are together. And of course you're stretching as you sew this. And I did backstitch, but you don't need to because it is basting. All right, so we'll take that out and now just check it and make sure that nothing has got buckled over on the right side. There's no puckers and no gathers and on the inside that sleeve is looking really good and so now we take a look at the right side of it and there you have a perfectly set in knit sleeve. There's the back and there is the front. So at this point now that you're confident that the sleeve has set in perfectly now what I would do is I would put my stitch length back to regular at which is 2.5 millimeters. I would stitch this again and then after that if you have a serger you'll want to serge off that excess amount of seam allowance but if you don't have a serger come in at uh, approximately a quarter of an inch away from that first line of stitching and stitch it again. So right now I'm just going to finalize this since everything looks so good I'll do this in a regular stitch length. And particularly for you beginners, if you're not familiar with setting in a sleeve, always baste. Even after all of these years of me setting in sleeves, I always, always baste it in first of all, even if it's a knit sleeve. a little back stitch and then it's done. So as I said the next step is to serge this and get it nice and neatened or do a double stitch about a quarter of an inch away and then trim away your excess seam allowance so that it's not bulky at your shoulder line. So there you have the very simple process of setting in a knit sleeve. I know as a beginner you're going to find this the easiest technique to do. And I certainly hope that you've joined our SureFit Designs community. If not, I do encourage you to do that in three easy steps. Number one, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is SureFit Designs. Number two, please make sure you go to surefitdesigns.com, the website, and sign up for our newsletter. And there's all kinds of free getting started gifts for you. And thirdly, make sure to join our Facebook group page. We've got seamstresses from all over the world that are interacting with one another and sharing their questions and showing their projects and in general having a great time. So I do invite you to join if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching.